Today, we're gonna to talk about eyelets. Not this kind of eyelet, this kind of eyelet. So we're talking about the kind of eyelet you would put in a piece of jewelry, a fishing lure, a Christmas ornament, anything that hangs from a string or has a loop in it, those kind of eyelets. There are two schools of thought. Is it better to make your casting than drill a hole in it and then screw in the eyelet into the casting? Or is it better to pot the eyelet into the mold and then cast the resin around the eyelet? For such a little tiny subject, there's a surprising amount of argument on both sides of it. So let's take a look at it. So to make this quick and easy, I broke out my boxes of beach trash. This is just my red box. I've got boxes in every color. All right, so let's dig through, see what we find. Got the greatest shapes of stuff in here. Got some nice lips. He's got nice lips, don't he? So here's a good shape. That's a likely candidate. Okay, let's put that one aside. Well, that's not a bad shape. Oh, wait a minute, what's this, what's this? Oh, this is a good shape. It's sturdy, it's thick plastic, so it should be pretty easy to drill in. Tell you what, done. Let's go ahead and use this as our pretend piece of jewelry, fishing lure, Christmas ornament, hanging bobble, you name it, whatever hangs on a string thing and uh, we'll get some hook eyes put in this thing. The first step is going to be creating our eyelets, and I have this assortment of paper clips. In fact, these are factory fresh paper clips. I didn't, who even knew that was a thing? But apparently you, you want the special factory fresh ones. I picked black just because I thought it would contrast well. So I'm just gonna use paper clips to build our eyelets. I'm just gonna trim this one here. I'm gonna keep this long. Trim this one here. Here's the whole difficulty and challenge when you're going to pot this piece into a mold. This is the object that's gonna create the mold. And that means that every wire loop that you want to embed into that mold has to be identical. You'll see what I mean. But you want wire loops that are as identical in manufacture as you can possibly get them. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do a small one and a big one. Then we'll reserve these out for our castings on the theory that they're the same. So now we are ready to go drill some holes. You can see I made tiny little marks where the holes go, right there and there. We have two different sizes of hangers and hopefully I'll be able to drill these with some accuracy. All right, there's our hangers all potted in and ready to go in the mold. I broke out the sticky wax, the ever popular and every lovely sticky wax from our friends at freemanwax.com. Check them out. And I'm just getting it nice and hot and sticky. Let's just pop this straight on into the bottom of the cup, just like that, nothing to it. We're not gonna need any funnels. We're not gonna need a sprue. We're not gonna need any vents. This is just a single shot deal. Looking good. Badly underestimated how much rubber to mix up. I balled it and failed. Break out the chunkies. All right, let's see what we can see here. How long should they be? About that long. Is there any dirt on this stuff? And that's pretty clean. This rubber is pretty clean. That's a good sign. Let's make up some chunkage. I've got a chunky insertion tool, also known as an X-Acto blade. The great thing about this model is that it has no sprues or vents or any really fragile parts that you have to be nervous about when you're dipping chunk. You always be, want to be careful that you don't break off any pieces of the model when you're cramming in the chunk. That would not be acceptable. In this case, we don't have to worry about it. The question is, can we put in enough? I might have to top it with some liquid rubber, but if I don't have to, I won't. The idea behind the chunkies is to save both time and rubber. And usually I only like to put in chunkies when I have just the last little bits to top. It's looking a little thin right now. I've got a lot of pieces crammed in there already. And I still have a good quarter of an inch. So I don't know if we're gonna make it. Well, I chunked till I could chunk no further. 
I was on the ragged edge of excessive chunkage. So mixed up a small second batch, a topper, and this should make sure that we're gonna get what we wanna get out of this mold. Now that should be plenty of meat on top of that eyelet. All those bubbles in there are just from scraping the cup and they're just right on the surface of the rubber. They'll pop right out and they won't hurt anything. It's the next day, rubber's nice and firm. Let's pull it apart. This plastic is brittle, gotta get the rubber out without cutting my fingers. There we go, all right. Nice. Here we go, here we go. I've identified the side I wanna cut down. It's this side. The whole trick to doing these is gonna be cutting out the loops. Okay, I got it all cut, nice and jaggy, but if you look, you can see inside the loop, that top wire loop, there's a wicked bubble in there. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's really gonna affect the casting much. Uh, the worst case is it's gonna be a little bit of extra cleanup, but I'm gonna blame that bubble on all those chunkies I crammed in there. Okay, so let's make the hanger that's gonna go inside the casting. To do that, just gonna cut this one. So that's that one. But here's the thing, if we just leave them straight, they would probably pull out reasonably easily from the casting, we don't want that. So what we're gonna do, make them not straight, like this. Bend them like that, so that they won't pull out. Like that. Okay, so now they're bent like that. So now, we're gonna try our best to get these things to pot in. This is the finicky part. This is the part I don't like. This is the part that I think is kind of silly, especially when we have a couple of hooks to put in. But the good news is, is the opening is big enough that I can see down in there. This is one of the reasons why I'm a, a bigger fan of eyelets than I am of doing this business. Because this business does have a quality of finickiness going for it. The little one stays in okay. We'll get the big one to stay in okay. Now like that. Let's see if we got them. Okay, these things are looking good down in there. Let's get this thing banded up. Hey y'all, prepare yourself for the rubber band. Man, you're bound to lose control when the rubber band man starts to jam. Party line looking good. Let's pour some resin. When this cup says everything's good, let's do it. Ugh. All right, let's see what we got nice and hard. Here we go. I shall be very interested to see how those loops came out. Indeed I will, and see what's going on with that. Let's pull them, ooh, yep. See, there were those little bubbles I was talking about, but look at that, knocked right off. Ooh, very, very light flash. Almost none on that eyelet. Little tiny bit of interior flash on this one. Yeah, check it out, that thing is pretty clean, those pot ends, nice. So that's one method, you can pot in like that. Now the parting line you see mostly, you can see a little bit of flash from my parting line. But of course, the big parting line goes without saying is this two-part parting line that was already in the plastic from the injection molding. That goes all the way around. Proof of concept, boy. Look at that, and those things aren't going anywhere. So we know that these guys are gonna be strong, but how strong are they compared to a little eyelet? I have had success over the years in both in Christmas ornaments and jewelry parts uh, using these little eyelets. I'm gonna put some super glue on there just to give myself a better chance of winning. Let's glue this little eyelet in, see what happens. The question is, which of them is stronger? And I, I don't know, just looking at them, I'm gonna say that the embedded, the potted end hangers are a lot stronger. They're like heavier wire, they stick down inside, they're embedded. The eyelet is only held on by its threads, basically. You can tell which method I prefer. <laughs> I, for doing jewelry, for doing Christmas ornaments, for doing any hanging thing, I've always preferred to use eyelets, primarily for speed over any other way. And also because I think it's really fiddly to get 
the wire loops and get everything in place inside the mold when you're trying to close up the mold. It just seems harder and takes a lot more time. And the cleanup is a little more. There was more cleanup around these potted in eyelets than there was um, around this screwed in eyelet. But, you know, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna pull those, these eyelets out. They're, they're just, they're so strong. There's no way that you're gonna pull about the potted, the potted in eyelets. But what about the other eyelet? Is it strong enough? I've always had good success with these. I've never had things, you know, falling or breaking or whatever. Uh, don't know how much pull strength they can withstand. I've never really tested it because I've never really had a problem with them. You can give it a try, give it a tug, see if it's easy to pull out. It is not easy. <laughs> see, for me, that little tiny eyelet is really strong, uh, surprisingly strong. Actually, I figured, I really thought I could pull it out of there just with my hands. So, I mean, my conclusion is small eyelets give you a more finished look, a better look. They're plenty strong for most uses. On the other hand, if you need real strength, that this is a part that's going to take a lot of pressure, this method does work. It's not that hard to do. The most finicky part is trying to get the cast eyelets to stay in place in the mold when you close the mold. Other than that, works out pretty good. Hey, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, watch this video next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. All right, we'll wait for him to shut the hell up. <laughs>